in the making. Those of you who think that George Bush coined that phrase, or he's the only one over the years that has uttered that phrase, you just haven't been paying attention. Adolf Hitler used virtually the same term, ladies and gentlemen. Stalin used virtually the same term. It has been used throughout history many times by many different people, all meaning exactly the same thing. When I was in the United States Navy, ladies and gentlemen, I was attached to the Office of Naval Intelligence for the last, well, not the last, but uh, for a period of approximately five years during my naval career. I had been four years in the United States Air Force with the Strategic Air Command and uh, was in the United States Navy about uh, 11 years. And uh, during that stint was attached to the Office of Naval Intelligence, where I learned most of the information that set me on a course to find out what was really happening to this country was as a member of the intelligence briefing team for the Commander-in-Chief of the United States Pacific Fleet, who at that time was Admiral Bernard Clary. I saw documents that usually only a very few people would ever see and would never see all of these different operations and programs and projects all at once as I and the other members of the briefing team did. Now let me explain to you how security clearances work in the government. There is no such thing, ladies and gentlemen, as above top secret. So when you hear people talking uh, foolishly about 23 levels above top secret, they're lying to you. There's not even one level above top secret. Top secret is the highest level of classification of information in the United States government and the military service. There are sub-compartmentalizations of the classification of top secret. For instance, if you have a project that you don't want anybody to know about, even if they do have a top secret clearance, then you classify it by compartmentalizing it. An example of such a project might be um, building the B-2 bomber, where each person, you would only want to know just exactly what they had a need to know. So each person would be compartmentalized under top secret in an area that would give him or her only access to that particular piece of information or equipment that they were building or making or helping to assemble in order to produce the B-2 bomber. So the classification for building brakes may have been top secret wall plug. <laughs> it could be anything. And the people who had a top secret clearance who were working on that particular piece of information that had to do with wall plug could only see that information and nothing else. Because to be able to see information that had something to do with top secret roof, if you didn't have that roof clearance added to your top secret, you would not be able to see that information. Now, I'm just making these things up to give you some idea of what I'm talking about. While I was on the briefing team of the Commander-in-Chief of the United States Pacific Fleet, I noticed one thing. All of the members of the briefing team and everybody who had anything to do with intelligence were members of at least one or more of the so-called secret societies known to most of us as fraternal organizations. I wondered how I was assigned to the Office of Naval Intelligence until I began to remember how I had filled out my forms to get my security clearance. It came to a page that folded out like some of the computer paper that goes through a printer. It's all attached. It, you can have 5,000 feet of, of uh, computer paper if you want to. Well, this was the form that folded out like that. And I forget how many sheets of paper there were included uh, that were attached like this, all folded up, uh, that contained the list of just about every kind of organization that you can imagine, ladies and gentlemen. And I was supposed to check or indicate any of those organizations that I had ever belonged to in my life. And it cautioned me that if I left out any organization that I had ever been a member of, 
that I would risk losing or not obtaining my security clearance. Well, the security clearance when you work in the government or in the military is a big thing, folks, and nobody wants to lose their security clearance or be denied a security clearance. It's, it's shameful, as a matter of fact. And um, so I noticed that one of the organizations I had belonged to in my life, called the Order of the Demolay, or the Demolay Order for Young Men, was not included. So I checked Freemasonry because the Demolay Organization for Young Men, or Teenage Boys, as a matter of fact, is the adolescent um, version of the Masonic Lodge, so to speak. Little did I know that when I checked Freemasonry, so that I could never be accused of leaving anything out, any of the organizations that I had belonged to, that I would be signed to the Office of Naval Intelligence and then ultimately to the briefing team of the Commander-in-Chief of the United States Pacific Fleet. <clears throat> and so that's how I got assigned. And uh, while I was there, I saw, ladies and gentlemen, and learned very quickly that the American people are very seldom, if ever, told the truth about literally anything. For instance, while President Nixon, and folks, don't blame it all on President Nixon, they all do it. This is the established policy of the national security apparatus. You don't tell anybody anything. They don't have a need to know. And you never tell the American people the truth about what's happening, ever. It's just that simple. They don't have a need to know. Well, President Nixon was telling the nation on television that we were not bombing North Vietnam, that we had no troops in Cambodia or Laos, that we had not put any of our people in Cambodia or Laos, that we were not bombing or strafing or doing any air missions in Cambodia, Cambodia or Laos. I was sitting there with a group of high-ranking naval officers waiting for the latest bombing results of North Vietnam and the latest situation reports of our combat missions in Cambodia and Laos. So I knew early on that the American people were being lied to, and they're being lied to about everything, folks. The Vietnam War had nothing to do with communism, had nothing to do with any of the politics in Southeast Asia, as the American people have been told. It had absolutely everything due to do with the drugs in what's known as the Golden Triangle and with the oil in the Gulf of Tonkin and the South China Sea. The number one mission of the United States Navy in the Gulf of Tonkin was not to support the troops engaged in battle on the ground in South Vietnam, but was to protect the oil exploration ships which were locating the places that were scheduled to begin drilling for oil when we won the war. <laughs> well, it turned out that we didn't win the war. At the same time, the Central Intelligence Agency was taking over from the French the, man the growing, the manufacture, and the exportation of drugs from Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, and the, the, uh, what's known as the Golden Triangle in order to use those drugs to bring in tons and tons of money for their black projects that they cannot get money for from Congress and for the ultimate use in destroying all existing sovereign nation states and bringing about a one world totalitarian socialist government. Now folks, this was a long, long time ago that I saw this information. I was at the headquarters of the Commander in Chief of the United States Pacific Fleet between 1970 and 1973. In fact, I left in February of 1973. And uh, during that time, I learned all of the things that I needed to know to do the research since then to arrive at the information that I'm going to give you right now. And so pay close attention. If I don't finish it today, I will, in fact, continue it tomorrow. And this is what you need to know. For those of you who are going to laugh or scoff and say that you don't believe it, that's fine. I don't care. You do what you want to do with the information, but nobody in this world can ever accuse me of not having given it to you. The plan for the destruction of the United States of America 
and the formation of a socialist, totalitarian, one-world government under the United Nations is contained, ladies and gentlemen, within a set of top-secret documents with the title Majesty 12, spelled M-A-J-E-S-T-Y-T-W-E-L-V-E. And no, ladies and gentlemen, I did not say Majestic 12. I said Majesty 12, spelled out, no space between Majesty and 12. The type font is a key to access of this information. All I can remember is it was a type of San Sharif. It was a tall, very thin type. And uh, in order to have access to this information, you had to have a top secret Q magic spelled M-A-J-I-C clearance, which we all had on the briefing team. We had access to anything that the Admiral had access to because we compiled the information and delivered it to him in briefings every morning in the briefing room. The term Majesty 12 honors the planned placement of ultimate power in a body of what they call a council of wise men, sort of like the National Security Council. These men are destined to rule the world as the behind the scenes, that is, not known to the public, of a, quote, Messiah, end quote, front man. This Messiah, or so-called Messiah, won't really be a Messiah, but the public will look at him or her as such. This Messiah will serve as a buffer between the real rulers, the council of wise men, and the sheeple of the world. Now, I discovered this plan between 1970 and 1973 while I was a member of the intelligence briefing team of the Commander-in-Chief of the United States Pacific Fleet, and I didn't understand all of it at that time. I didn't really know what it was that I had had access to. The plan, ladies and gentlemen, outlines the formation of a world totalitarian socialist government. It is the policy of the United States government. It is to be ruled by a behind-the-scenes council of wise men. A benevolent dictator who is thought to be a messiah will be perceived as the real head of government. The Constitution of the United States of America and its Bill of Rights will be scrapped. A parliamentary form of government will take its place. All military forces and individuals are to be disarmed except for an internal police force which will carry only the minimum weapons needed to maintain internal order. There will only be one military force. Our military forces at the present time are acting as this force. It will be a world police force under the United Nations in sufficient numbers and with state-of-the-art technology so that it will be able to field overwhelming forces against any perceived threat to the world supra-government. If you doubt this and if you doubt that it is the avowed policy of the United States government, see State Department Publication 7277, which outlines the formation of this world police force. The military of the United States of America is currently filling the requirement. The senior officer corps of all of our military forces have betrayed their oaths of allegiance to the Constitution and have joined the conspiracy. They are, in fact, traitors, and they are, in fact, engaged in high treason. The source of this conspiracy, ladies and gentlemen, will be found in the body known as the Illuminati. It is made up of the highest adepts of the combined total of the so-called fraternal order, orders and secret societies. These people are bound together by blood oaths, a secret religion, and the promise of an elite status within regional government and the world supra-government. To put it in their own words, quote, if you are not one of us, you are nothing, end quote. Their religion is based upon the Kabbalah and the Luciferian philosophy. They are not bound by any oath or allegiance save their own. They are loyal to no government or people save their own, and they are citizens of no country save their already in place secret world government. To understand some sense of feel for the concept and how this is being done right under your very noses, see a movie called They Live. I'm not telling you that They Live is a true movie. I'm telling you that in this movie, 
the concept of how they are carrying about the destruction from within is presented to you in a method that you will clearly and, and easily be able to understand. Now, you cannot ever hope to understand the philosophy of any branch of the so-called mystery school, which is the Illuminati, without many years of study and a complete knowledge of their symbolic language. You must understand, ladies and gentlemen, that like many other organizations, they attract those who completely miss the vote or are just too stupid to get it. When you join a branch of the Brotherhood by any name, I don't care what you call it, Freemasonry, the Theosophical Society, the Anthroposophic Society, Fraternitas Rosae Crucae, Knights Templar, Sovereign and Military Knights of Malta, or any other fraternal order or secret society, no one ever sits down with you and explains the meaning of anything. An actual, literal, esoteric education would just be too dangerous. It could result in public expose, something which the Illuminati must avoid at any cost. The organization of the order is a pyramidal structure of degrees. On the bottom are the so-called blue lodges, full of ignorant, materialistic, and opportunistic fools. And yes, folks, I said fools, and I mean it. Anyone who would join a secret society and be told up front, right in the beginning, that they're not going to learn anything, not one single thing about it, until they have been initiated and climb up the ladder of degrees in the organization, cannot be anything other than fools. They might be joining a society of murderers, for all they know. Promising candidates are chosen to be helped up the ladder of initiation by the help of those who have gone before. The initiate is presented with the objects of study, books, symbols, ritual, and camaraderie. But illumination must come from within. Each degree of initiation provides a new key to ultimate enlightenment, but only for those who can truly understand the ritual and symbols of the degree. Everyone at the bottom rungs of the ladder of initiation, especially those in the Blue Lodge in the first three degrees, don't know beans jack dip about anything about what they belong to and never will. Where understanding or the ability to keep the secrets stops, the progress of the candidate stops, and they never, ever progress any higher. Only those above the 29th degree have the ability to understand the ultimate secrets and goals of the order. A very promising select few are handpicked for progress beyond the 32nd degree. Those chosen disappear behind the veil and become one of the, quote, thousand points of light, end quote, but they are more properly known as the Magi. That process has always been the protection of the Illuminati in a Christian world that has had a tendency to burn at the stake those who differed in belief or philosophy. The burning alive of men like Giordano Bruno and Jacques de Molay, the persecution of their orders, and persecution of men like Galileo by the Catholic Church, has resulted in the Brotherhood's hatred of Christianity and the goal of the ultimate extermination of all religions save theirs. Now listen to me carefully. The goal is the ultimate extermination of all religions except for their religion. And yes, there is a religion. The philosophy at the core, ladies and gentlemen, of all of the mystery schools is the foundation and the font of socialism and communism. Most socialists don't have the slightest idea that they are puppets of an arcane philosophy bent upon world domination. They actually believe they will ultimately realize a world where everything is free courtesy of Big Brother and where all risk and worry has disappeared. Any such world would only be a world of slaves dependent upon an elite class of masters. What fools. The philosophy of the mystery school is the Luciferian philosophy as put forth by General, that's Christopher Albert Pike, 
He was one of the founders of the Ku Klux Klan. But it is not his original thought. He just expounded upon it in forms that eventually became accessible to those who seek it, like me. Before you begin blabbering that Albert Pike's name never included Christopher, you had better look up the meaning of that name and further understand that the Christ of the mysteries has absolutely nothing to do with the Christ of the New Testament, at least not in the manner in which it is interpreted by the Christian church. Christopher literally means Christ-like. And in the mystery religion, in the ranks of the Illuminati, Albert Pike reached what they call apotheosis. He became Christ-like, is an ascended master, helping to guide them from the so-called spirit world. If you'll look straight up, standing in the rotunda of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., you'll see that they believe the same thing happened to George Washington, the first president of the United States of America. Pictured on the inside of the Capitol dome, you will see George Washington in the chariot of Apollo riding across the sky, surrounded around the periphery of the dome with all the old gods of the Roman pantheon. Now, if you want some sense of how these things are being brought about, watch the series Star Trek from the beginning episodes up to the present. And you will begin to realize that it was an indoctrination into the concepts of socialism through subliminal initiation of the youth of the nation. The captains, James T. Kirk and Christopher Pike, are symbolic salutes to the order of the Knights of the Temple of Jerusalem and to the Brotherhood's greatest philosopher and probably its most prolific writer, Christopher Albert Pike. Those who understand the symbolic language would have noticed the most recent Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences Award ceremony recognized the coming of the, quote, new dawn, end quote, with the rising sun on the backdrop and the two triple crowns of the mysteries representing the trinity of Osiris, Isis, and the child Horus on each side. And you thought they were just statues of the Oscar. Very simply, ladies and gentlemen, the philosophy is, quote, Adam and Eve were held prisoner in the chains of ignorance by an unjust and vindictive God in the Garden of Eden. They were set free from their bonds by Lucifer, known in the myths as Prometheus. And the setting free of their bonds is called evolution or primordial knowing. They were set free by Lucifer through his agent Satan in the guise of a serpent, which is the ancient symbol of wisdom, with the gift of intellect, known in the mysteries as fire. Through the use of his intellect, they believe man will perfect the race, the Aryan race, Anglo-Aryan race to be exact, and will himself become God. It is a metaphor for the development of the thinking man through the process of evolution and the eventual domination of the universe by learning how to dominate and control nature. This process is called magic. The result will be the apotheosis of the race of mankind and the elimination of all who cannot make this paradigm shift in the coming new age. The alchemists had the same religion, but disguised it, ladies and gentlemen, under the profane interpretation of the exoteric or outward expression of turning lead into gold. The search for the philosopher's pure red stone was really the attempt to perfect the soul of mankind. Don't you really feel pretty smart now? I hope so. I hope a light is coming on in your head. Because of a lot of this, you have seen glimpses of little pieces here and there. Some of the symbology has mystified you. Some of it will gel in your mind as you hear this. Those who are attracted to the mysteries, ladies and gentlemen, who are unable to grasp the esoteric meaning of their education, often take the exoteric meaning to be the truth and turn to Satan or Lucifer as their object of worship never understanding the metaphor for a much deeper philosophy. The order never objects to this because these Satan worshippers are useful in their own manner. They furnish a diversion and are often a source of large sums of money, although the Brotherhood folks has seldom found themselves lacking in fools or funds. Shirley MacLaine understands the philosophy perfectly, though probably not in its correct interpretation. She is a member of, in good standing. 
I am God, is, of course, the true message. Fire is the god of the mysteries, and its priests are the philosophers of fire. They believe that any concept of creation must result in the idea that all things are manifestations of the Creator, which is pantheism. Since man is the only creation with intelligence and original thought, the combined or collective consciousness of mankind, they believe, is the mind of God. Ergo, man is God. And that should enlighten you to the source of some of the more difficult to understand concepts of the so-called New Age movement. Now, ladies and gentlemen, don't get the fool called by the mysteries the profane mixed up with the king or the initiate known as Fraternitas Rex Mundi. Those who cannot understand this philosophy through the hidden language of symbology and make the shift in thinking for the coming millennium are doomed to extinction. And the spokespersons for the New Age make absolutely no secret of this fact that has been published over and over and over again, that those who cannot make this so-called paradigm shift will simply be exterminated. Wake up, America, you've been had, and wise up. None of you, none of you, none of you, and I'll say it again and again, and I don't care how angry you get with me, it is absolutely true, none of you are even remotely as smart as you think you are. This is the age of deception, and the world is balanced upon a razor. One half is scheduled to be exterminated if these people have their way, and the other half is scheduled to be enslaved when the mystical union between the moon, which is Isis or the church, and the sun, which is Osiris or the doctrine, greets the sun, spelled S-O-N, of the morning, which is Horus or the full body of initiates or adepts, on the horizon, which is Horus risen, in the, quote, new dawn, end quote, which is the realization of the new world order. With that in mind, read the full text of President Clinton's 1997 State of the Union Address to Congress. And if a light doesn't flick on in your brain when you read that, you are beyond help. He said, We are watching the sun set while we prepare our children for the new dawn. We have 1,000 days to complete our work. Wake up. This conspiracy, ladies and gentlemen, is also extremely racist. These people consider blacks, Hispanics, and aboriginal people to be, quote, useless eaters, end quote. They believe, or at least profess, that the Anglo-Aryan race is the true Israel, and thus the master race. Now, in all truth, the leaders of this subversion don't believe any such thing, ladies and gentlemen, but they use this as a tool to manipulate and guide the silly idiots who do. Despite the racism of the Illuminati, they have convinced the useless eaters that they are their friends, benefactors, and protectors. While destroying these poor people with socialism, they have convinced them that Marx is their savior. And these sheep will follow this Judas goat eagerly, first to be sheared, and then to their re-enslavement and eventual, probably, slaughter. In this world government, there will be no individual rights, only privileges. Privileges can be granted or denied at will by the world super government. All property is to be owned by the state. There will be a redistribution of wealth in order to eliminate class differences and level the standard of living to a much lower level in the advanced nations, such as the United States of America, and to a higher standard of living in the so-called third world nations. This leveling of the standard of living will be accomplished through a global economic collapse, which right now, regardless of what you see happening in this phony stock market, is in its beginning stages. 
The economic collapse will fulfill the goal of Marx and Engels' Communist Manifesto, which mandates the elimination of the middle class. The graduated income tax, NAFTA, and GATT, which have caused industry to move into third world nations in order that corporations may exploit cheap labor, are also a part of this process. All county and state governments are to be eliminated and replaced with regional government. And those of you listening who are in county and state and city governments already have felt the pressure to bring this about. These regional governments are, in fact, already in place. Regionalism is gradually taking control throughout America. There will be no more cash money. All trade will be accomplished by a system of computer credits with accounts accessed through debit cards or computer chip implants, which will also serve as personal identification, driver's license, and etc. The plan, ladies and gentlemen, for the creation of a socialist world government is protected by an invented extraterrestrial threat from space. The entire UFO phenomenon and the so-called ufology, which I call the ufology movement, has been created to further the protection and activation of this plan. Within Majesty 12 is Operation Majority, which justifies the plan by presenting an extraterrestrial threat as the reason for the necessity for world government. Operation Majority is named after the original Bolshevik party, which sparked the Russian Revolution. Bolshevik literally means the majority. The plan states that if the American people are ever told of this extraterrestrial presence, these aliens will destroy the United States of America. Now, folks, all who have access to this plan who are or who inadvertently discover the plan are silenced by that warning. And when I first saw it, I believed it for over 16 years before I began to produce research that told me that this was all the biggest hoax in the history of the world to create a phony artificial threat to this earth. The report from Iron Mountain confirmed it. Statements made in 1917 by John Dewey, that's 1917, ladies and gentlemen, by John Dewey in a speech he made in New York also confirmed it. In my study of the broadcast on CBS, which was owned and created by William Paley, who, ladies and gentlemen, has always been an operative of the intelligence community of the United States of America, confirmed it. A further safeguard ensures that anyone who links the so-called alien threat with the coming world government will be ridiculed and discredited by the press. When I saw this plan while I was in the Navy, I believed it. It was not until I had performed many years of research that I was able to fully understand exactly what it was that I had seen. It was extremely difficult, at best, for me to believe that my government and the Navy had used me in the manner in which they had, especially since I had dedicated my life to government and military service. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this plan is real. The extraterrestrial threat is artificial. The alien threat, or so-called alien threat, is presented as real through the use of secret technology which was originally developed by the Germans in their secret weapons programs during World War II by geniuses like Nikola Tesla and many others. Most military and government personnel who have access to this material believe sincerely that the extraterrestrial threat is real. They, like I, could not and will not probably understand how they are being manipulated and lied to. It took me many years to understand it. None of them, and I can say this absolutely with no hesitation whatsoever, not one single one of them has ever seen any evidence of the existence of any extraterrestrial creature or any advanced technology other than that of human origin. All and I mean all, ladies and gentlemen, so-called leaks are intentional disinformation projects perpetrated by the counterintelligence divisions of the various organizations within the intelligence community, which are designed to promote the artificial alien threat scenario while allowing for complete deniability on the part of government. 
the antics of Vicki Cooper, no relation, now Vicki Cooper Ecker, Donald Francis Ecker III, William Moore, Jamie Chandere, Stanton T. Friedman, Bud Hopkins, John Lear, Linda Moulton Howe, Art Bell, George Knapp, Colonel Philip Corso, the so-called alien autopsy film, which is a fake, fraud, hoax, NASA, the Mars meteorite, supposedly containing fossil evidence of life on Mars, and many other people and events are projects of this type. The plan, ladies and gentlemen, to create an artificial extraterrestrial threat to the Earth was first mentioned by John Dewey in New York during 1917 in a speech to the visiting Japanese imperial delegation headed by Viscount Ishii. The premise was tested for credibility with the CBS presentation of The War of the Worlds by Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater on October the 30th, 1938. The public believed that this broadcast was a real news event. Many people jumped out of windows. In Grover's Mill, New Jersey, farmers and residents ran out of their homes and forgetting who they were and where they were, shot their own water tower to shreds, believing that it was one of these alien tripod death machines. The public believed that what they heard was real, and thus it set the stage for the implementation of an alien threat scenario. The only problem was that the state of the art of technology at that time did not allow for a believable presentation. The development of saucer-shaped wingless and tailless flying machines by the Germans during World War II and by the United States, Great Britain, Canada, and most probably Australia after World War II solved the problem. Now, we recently came into possession of a document that was released to us through the Freedom of Information Act from the Central Intelligence Agency. And here's what the document says. Memorandum to Director Psychological Strategy Board Subject Flying Saucers. One, I am today transmitting to the National Security Council a proposal, tab A, in which it is concluded that the problems connected with unidentified flying objects appear to have implications for psychological warfare as well as for intelligence and operations. Two, the background for this view is presented in some detail in tab B. Three, I suggest that we discuss at an early board meeting the possible offensive or defensive utilization of these phenomena for psychological warfare purposes, signed Walter B. Smith, known as General Walter Bedell Smith, who at that time was the director of the Central Intelligence Agency. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot use something for psychological warfare, or for intelligence and operations. You cannot use them for defensive utilization or for psychological warfare purposes unless you are the ones who have complete and total control over these objects. After World War II, the announcement of the Jewish Holocaust, the proposal of a world government which would prevent future wars and genocide by the formation of the United Nations in 1945 and the announcement of sightings of flying saucers by Kennel Arneth, that's Kenneth Arnold, <laughs> my tongue is getting a little tied here, folks, by Kenneth Arnold, an ex-intelligence officer in 1947, launched this deception. And since then, by the way, every single person connected with UFOs has been a member of some branch of the intelligence community. The natural guilt harbored by the men of the 509th Atomic Bomb Wing after the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki made them eager conspirators in orchestrating the faked crash of an extraterrestrial craft and discovery of shaved and surgically altered monkeys near Roswell, New Mexico. The artificial extraterrestrial threat was thus implanted in the public consciousness. We also have in our possession another recently released document, this one from the Federal Bureau of Investigation that literally tells the truth about Roswell, New Mexico. It's from the FBI office in Dallas to the director and senior agent in charge in Cincinnati. 
that's the director of the FBI and the senior agent in charge in Cincinnati. Urgent, flying disk information concerning, and that's blacked out, headquarters, 8th Air Force, telephonically advised this office that an object purporting to be a flying disk was recovered near Roswell, New Mexico this date. The disk is hexagonal in shape and was suspended from a balloon by cable, which balloon was approximately 20 feet in diameter. There are several words blacked out. Further advised that the object found resembles a high-altitude weather balloon with a radar reflector, but that telephonic conversation between their office and Wright Field had not, this is blanked out, and then borne out this belief. Disc and the balloon being transported to Wright Field by special plane for examination. Information provided this office because of national interest in case blank, that's blacked out, and fact that National Broadcasting Company, Associated Press, and others attempting to break story of location of disc today. Another two words are blacked out. Advised would request Wright Field to advise Cincinnati office results of examination, no further investigation being conducted. And then it has all the routing and the typical stuff on it. This is an authentic document. It is real, and it tells the truth. Now, applying Hitler's concept, ladies and gentlemen, of the big lie, the artificial extraterrestrial threat was nurtured and built into an always present possibility over the next 50 years. Eventually, a large percentage of the world's population, including many of you listening, found themselves believing in alien ships, extraterrestrial visitation, alien mutilation of animals, which is really the byproduct of the government's experimentation with low-level radiation effects upon animals and humans across the country, downwind of atomic power plants, nuclear weapon assembly plants, and, and various other uh, facilities that occasionally, on purpose or by accident, release radiation into the atmosphere. And alien abductions of humans with absolutely, and I'll say this again, with absolutely no proof that extraterrestrials exist anywhere in the universe, much less that any have ever visited this planet whatsoever. To try to obtain any, just in case some exists, some organizations have offered as much as $1 million reward to anyone who will bring forth any shred of any evidence whatsoever of the proof of the existence of extraterrestrial life. Not one single person has ever come forward to claim any of these rewards ever at any time. The artificial threat is further advanced through the mind control programming of Marxists in Hollywood, television, advertising, publishing houses, and of course the vast ufology movement, all of which are in the complete control of the Illuminati and the intelligence community. Fear, ladies and gentlemen, is instilled through the incidental use of terror inspired by the cattle and animal mutilation byproducts of the government's secret radiation monitoring operations and the so-called alien abduction scenario induced by state-of-the-art and extremely sophisticated mind control operations. To make interstellar travel believable, NASA was created. The Apollo space program foisted the idea that man could travel to and walk upon the moon. Every Apollo mission was carefully rehearsed and then filmed in large sound stages at the Atomic Energy Commission's top-secret test site in the Nevada desert and in a secured and guarded sound stage at the Walt Disney Studios, within which was a huge scale mock-up of the moon. All names, missions, landing sites, and events in the Apollo space program echo the occult metaphors, rituals, and symbology of the Illuminati's secret religion. One of the most transparent was the faked explosion on Apollo 13, which was the metaphor for the initiation ceremony involving the death, which was the explosion, placement in the coffin, which was the period of uncertainty of their survival, communion with the spiritual world and the imparting of esoteric knowledge to the candidate, which was their orbit and observation of the moon without physical contact, 
rebirth of the initiate, which is the solution of the problem and repairs, and the raising up by the grip of the lion's paw, which is the reentry and recovery of Apollo 13. 13 is the number of death and rebirth, death and reincarnation, sacrifice, the phoenix, the Christ, not the Christ that you know, ladies and gentlemen, and the transition from the old to the new. Another revelation to those who understand the symbolic language of the Illuminati is the hidden meaning of the names of the space shuttles. Now listen to me very carefully. Quote, a Colombian enterprise to endeavor for the discovery of Atlantis and all challengers shall be destroyed, end quote. Exploration of the moon stopped because it was impossible to continue the hoax without being ultimately discovered. And of course, they ran out of pre-filmed episodes. No man, no human man, has ever ascended higher than 300 miles, if that high, above the Earth's surface in any publicly known space program. No man has ever orbited, landed on, or walked upon the moon in any publicly known space program. If we ever went to the moon, ladies and gentlemen, it was not in the Apollo space program. If we have ever been to the moon, it has been done in secret with a far different technology. Just to give you one example, scientists have written, have stated publicly, ladies and gentlemen, that for a human being, to survive transportation through the Van Allen radiation belt, which it completely encloses this earth, encircles this earth, it would take four feet of lead. Now just think about that. The tremendous radiation encountered in the Van Allen belt, the solar radiation, cosmic radiation, temperature control, and many other problems connected with space travel prevent living organisms leaving our atmosphere with our known level of technology. Any intelligent high school student with a basic physics book can prove NASA faked the Apollo moon landings. Any photographer who is even remotely worth his salt can prove that almost all of the photographs presented to us as being taken in space or on the moon by the Apollo space program are fraud are fake, are phony. All of them were made with studio lighting in specially prepared buildings and mock-ups of the lunar surface. Now, if you doubt this, please explain, ladies and gentlemen, how the astronauts walked upon the moon's surface enclosed in a spacesuit in full sunlight, absorbing a minimum of 265 degrees of heat surrounded by a vacuum. NASA tells us the moon has no atmosphere and that the astronauts were surrounded by the vacuum of space. Heat is defined as the vibration or movement of molecules within matter. The faster the molecular motion, the higher the temperature. The slower the molecular motion, the colder the temperature. Absolute zero is that point where all molecular motion ceases. In order to have hot or cold, molecules must be present. A vacuum is a condition of nothingness where there are no molecules. There is no hot and no cold in a vacuum. Vacuums exist, however, in degrees. Some scientists tell us that there is no such thing as an absolute vacuum, but that space is the closest thing to an absolute vacuum that is known to man. There are so few molecules present in most areas of what we know as space that any concept of hot or cold is absolutely impossible to measure and, in fact, for all intents and purposes, does not exist. A vacuum is a perfect insulator. That, ladies and gentlemen, is why a thermos bottle or a vacuum bottle is used to store hot or cold liquids in order to maintain the temperature for the longest time possible without reheating or recooling. You see, space is not cold. Space insulates whatever is in space and tends to keep it at whatever temperature it is for the longest period of time possible. Radiation of all types will travel through a vacuum, but will not affect the vacuum. Radiant heat from the sun travels through the vacuum of space, but does not warm space. In fact, the radiant heat of the sun has no effect whatsoever until it strikes matter. Molecular movement will increase in direct proportion 
to the radiant energy which is absorbed by matter. The time it takes to heat matter exposed to direct sunlight in space is determined by its color, its elemental properties, its distance from the sun, and its rate of absorption of radiant heat energy. And at this point, we're going to have to call it a day. And I will continue right here where I left off tomorrow. That is, if I'm still here to do it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're listening closely, and I hope you're taking notes, because I'm going to blow the lid off of this crap. The greatest nation, the greatest people, with the highest standard of living, the best opportunities, the highest morals, the best educational systems that has ever existed on this earth is being destroyed by these scumbags from within. Some of them are your relatives. Good night. And God bless each and every single one of you. You're listening to the Hour of the Time.